All that ever matters for anyone is their mind, their memories, feelings, and intentions. Those mental states are shaped by experience. But as we go about our lives, what determines which pieces of information we're going to remember and which ones will forever fade into oblivion? Learning and memory occur in the brain. Just like any other organ in the body, the brain is made out of cells, each with their cell membranes, DNA-containing nuclei, and complex biochemical machinery supporting their functions. But unlike cells in other organs, nerve cells, or neurons, are also endowed with special trees that emanate from the cell body, providing a powerful substrate for communicating with each other. These trees are very diverse and vary in shape from one neuron to the next. Every neuron, in fact, has two distinct types of trees called dendrites and axons. Dendrites integrate input signals from other neurons, while axons carry output signals from a neuron to its target. A synapse is the connection from the axonal branch of one neuron to the dendritic branch of another, and the brain is packed full of axons and dendrites forming a giant synaptic network. We can visualize the connections between just two neurons, but to understand their role in determining the properties of our mind, it is important to realize that a human brain contains an enormous number of these cells, close to 100 billion, forming up to 1,000 trillion synapses. This is not far from the estimated count of real botanical trees and of their leaves on the entirety of Earth. If we sum the length of all axons and dendrites in a human brain, we could reach the staggering figure of 100 million kilometers, or more than 60 million miles, similar to the length of all the roads reported anywhere by Google Maps, or 2,500 times the circumference of our planet. So how do these mighty neuronal trees shape our inner lives? We start from the uncontroversial assumption of scientific materialism, that mental states are spatial temporal brain patterns of electric activity. To help illustrate what that means, I'm going to oversimplify the structure of neurons so that the cell body is now a diamond in the middle, and its beautiful dendritic and axonal arbors are each reduced to just blue and red sticks. I will indicate the location of a possible synapse with a little twig on the dendrite or a small button on the axon. So for example, this would be a synapse from the horizontal neuron to the vertical one. And this could be a simple circuit made out of 12 neurons of two different types, indicated by black and silver diamonds. In this admittedly cartoonish example, a spatial temporal activity pattern might look like this where a brief flash indicates an active neuron. I will play it again. In this case, the activity started at the top neurons and moved clockwise. Now, note that because neuronal activity propagates through synapses, the synaptic connectivity of the brain circuit determines which activity patterns can happen and which ones cannot much the way the grid of intersecting roads in a city determines which traffic patterns can occur. Because brain activity patterns are mental states, the network connectivity of a brain determines what that individual is able to think, that is, his or her knowledge. Many neuroscientists thus believe that learning entails the formation of new synapses. The newly formed connections enable the instantiations of activity patterns that were not possible before, corresponding, for example, to a new memory that one will be able to remember in the future. Going back to our example, the propagation of the activity pattern we played earlier could have led to the formation of two new synapses here. We know that creating synapses requires experience, such as a lived episode, a mental association, or being taught new facts. And the activity pattern we watched could have represented one such experience. Still, we only remember a tiny fraction of what we experience, and we forget most of our mental states. So 
activity is necessary but not sufficient to form synapses. To elucidate the mechanism behind this phenomenon, we restate two simple facts. Only dendrites properly located along an axonal path can receive inputs from that presynaptic cell. And only axons that invade a given dendritic field can transmit their signals to that postsynaptic cell. This leads us to a fundamental principle of the brain-mind relationship. New synapses can only form between two neurons if their axons and dendrites share some of the same brain space. To illustrate the profound implication of this simple rule, I will tell you a story of something that happened to me some years ago when I moved for the first time to the suburbia. I was sitting on the porch, enjoying my new backyard, when I saw a beetle and heard it buzz. Now, being born and raised in a city, I didn't see many beetles before, and I had never realized that they could buzz. So that day, I learned something new, which I still remember two decades later. I will depict here one neuron representing the buzzing sound and another neuron representing the sight of a beetle. Real brains likely encode each of these concepts by activating several hundred neurons, but we will keep things simple here. Learning that beetles can buzz involves the formation of a new synapse between these two neurons, which requires that the axon of the buzzing neuron be near the dendrite of the beetle neuron. Now, why would that be so? Let's think of other insects that we already knew could buzz, such as wasps. The buzzing axon must have synapses in place with those. And now the question becomes, why are the dendrites of the beetle's neuron near the dendrites of the wasp neurons? Of course, we know of many properties in common between these two creatures, such as they both fly erratically. So the axon of the neuron representing erratic flight must make synapses with both of these dendrites, which means that those two dendritic trees must be nearby in the brain. Notice that this constraint due to the physical architecture of real brains is not accounted for in artificial neural networks such as deep learning and chat GPT. Again, all of these concepts, beetles, wasps, buzzing, and flight, are each represented by many neurons in the brain, but we only show one each here for the sake of clarity. We could learn that beetles can buzz because the axon of buzzing overlapped in space with the dendrites of beetles. And this axonal dendritic overlap provides the opportunity to form a new synapse. And as a quick reminder, the overlap between the buzzing axon and the beetle dendrite is due to other pre-existing synapses that represent known features of beetles and of buzzing insects. This is the notion of background information gating which states that we need to have suitable background knowledge in order to acquire new information. We can even quantify the probability of an axonal dendritic overlap based on the number of synapses those trees make with other related neurons. That is, known features they may have in common. This is the same algorithm common search engines utilize when they suggest that users who watch that movie also like this other one, and we can generalize this equation into an elegant formula representing the entire brain with a connectivity matrix. What that means is that of all the experiences we live through, we only form new memories out of those for which we have suitable pre-existing expertise. And again, it is useful to emphasize that this is not how AI and artificial neural networks operate. Let's analyze the implications of this tree-based architecture of nerve cell circuits in the brain with a thought experiment. Imagine that as I was sitting on my backyard porch when I first heard a beetle buzz, I was also eating for the first time in my life the sour sweet tasting kumquat fruit. Also pretend that my twin brother was sitting next to me, eating too a kumquat for the first time, as well as experiencing the buzzing beetle. In this thought experiment, although I had previous experience with some insects and thus knew that beetles fly and wasps buzz, I was completely clueless about fruits. In contrast, 
My twin brother had previous experience with produce and thus knew, for example, the color and taste of grapefruits, but was almost entirely naive regarding insects. Due to the background information gating of axonal dendritic overlap, I would later remember that beetles can buzz, but not that kumquats taste sour sweet, while my twin brother would later remember that kumquats taste sour sweet, but not that beetles can buzz, all out of the same identical experience. Now, forget my imaginary twin brother, but let's keep the scenario in which I was eating for the first time a sour sweet kumquat while noticing a buzzing beetle. Except I'm now a reasonably normal person with typical pre-existing knowledge and past experiences with other insects and fruits. So I will learn both that beetles can buzz and that kumquats taste sour sweet. But wait, how about the possibility that seeing a beetle could taste sour sweet and that eating a kumquat would make my ears buzz? Even though these absurd hypotheses are obviously false, how does my brain know? After all, it all happened together in the same experience. And the beetle neuron, the buzzing neuron, the sour sweet neuron, and the kumquat neuron were all active at the same time. In fact, artificial neural networks struggle to discriminate between real associations and spurious co-occurrences. And this causes frequent AI hallucinations, for example, in large language models. But now you know that axonal dendritic overlaps in the brain protect us from this kind of a catastrophic confusion because we have no previous knowledge or synapses of buzzing fruit and sour sweet tasting insects. The tree-like shape of spatially overlapping axons and dendrites in nerve cells underlies the evolutionary powerful capacity of our brains to tease out predictive causal relations from the unescapable noise of experience. The very same mechanism makes the mind of each individual absolutely unique, so that from the exact same episode, two people may learn and later remember different details. <laughs>